Let's talk about translation in terms of its three specific phases. Just as we saw with transcription, we can break down the process of translation into an initiation phase, an elongation phase, and a termination phase. Let's start with initiation. It's the rRNA in the small subunit of the ribosome that will first interact with the mRNA at a very particular location. This rRNA is going to help place the ribosome at just the right spot on the mRNA so that it is prepared to translate the entire mRNA. The rRNA is going to bind to the mRNA um, at a location that will place the ribosome just upstream of the start codon. So that means that there has to be a particular spot on the mRNA that this small subunit is going to recognize. And we give this short sequence of bases a name. The short sequence of bases on the mRNA molecule is called the shine delgarno sequence, or more generally, the ribosomal binding site. And you can see this sequence right here on the slide. On the mRNA, there's this short sequence of bases. This is the shine delgarno sequence. And in the small ribosomal subunit, you, we have a complementary match to that sequence. So in comes the small subunit. It recognizes and binds to the ribosomal binding site. And now we have um, sort of a, a starting point or a location to guide in the large subunit. The Shine-Delgarno sequence in the mRNA is located about six bases upstream from the start codon. In order to ensure that the small subunit and the, and the Shine-Delgarno sequence, in order to ensure that that binding is secure, there are some proteins that come in to assist. And these are called initiation factors because we are in the process of initiating translation. And that's what this slide demonstrates for us. You can see in the drawing the small ribosomal subunit in gold. And you can see that there's a sequence of bases right here. This is the rRNA that's in this small subunit. And it's a complementary match to the shine Delgarno sequence in the mRNA, which is right here. Notice that the start codon, the AUG, in the mRNA is located right here. So this is going to come in and bind with this. That's going to place this big piece of material, this small subunit of the ribosome, right here and it will allow for the start codon to be in just the right location when the large subunit comes in. These little green uh, strands here, they look a little bit like slugs. These are those initiation factors. They're just going to make sure that the binding that happens from here to here is secure, that this small subunit is very stably bound to the mRNA. Now, during initiation, before the large subunit is guided into place, the first amino acyl tRNA is going to come in. Now remember, this tRNA has to have the correct anticodon to match the start codon. And since the start codon is AUG, the anticodon is going to be UAC. And this tRNA carries a methionine. So for every single protein that's produced in a prokaryotic cell, 
the very first amino acid that will be placed is methionine. Now, it doesn't always stay there. Sometimes during the processing of the final polypeptide, that methionine gets removed. But it's interesting that the very first amino acid is always going to be methionine. So in this drawing, we can see where the small subunit has landed, if you will. Here's the rRNA. Here's the shine delgarno sequence in the mRNA. The initiation factors are sort of holding everything together. Here is the start codon. The first aminoacyl tRNA has come in. It's, it's all loaded up with an amino acid. And we're really ready to go. So in comes the large subunit. And you'll notice that when it lands, it's going to place that first tRNA, not in the A site, but in the P site. So the very first tRNA with that methionine amino acid lands in the middle. It lands in the P site. Now, what that means is that the second codon, and in this drawing it's GAA, that is now sitting right underneath the A site. So we're ready for the second amino acid to come in. Now remember, all mRNA has the AUG. The start codon is where all translation begins. But any codon beyond that point is going to vary depending upon which protein is being produced. So once the large subunit is in place and the methionine carrying tRNA is in the P site, initiation is done. Now we're ready to begin the second phase, which is called elongation. So at the start of elongation, we have two tRNA in place. One is in the P site, holding methionine, and one is now in the A site holding whatever amino acid is, is coded for in this codon. Now, think about what happens when two amino acids are side by side, because that's essentially what's happening in the ribosome. Imagine that this amino acid is the methionine. This is not methionine, but imagine that it is. So, like all amino acids, it has a central carbon, it has an amino group, it has a carboxyl group, it has a single hydrogen, and it has whatever its R group is right here. Now, here's the second amino acid. This is the one that's sitting on the tRNA that's in the A site right now. So it has the same structure, but since they're side by side, that means that the carboxyl group of the methionine is facing the amino group of the second amino acid. Now we're going to build a peptide bond, and that's the catalytic job that the large subunit does. It combines the carboxyl group of the amino acid on this side and the amino group of the amino acid on this side, and it builds a peptide bond right there. Now, we've established a bond between those first two amino acids. Now we need to bring in the next amino acid, and that means the ribosome has to move. It has to shift over downstream by one codon. We give this shifting process a name. We call this translocation. We're going to move the ribosome downstream by one codon. Think about what will happen then. The first tRNA, the one that was holding the methionine, is now going to leave the P site and it's going to go into the E site for ejection. It no longer holds methionine. The methionine has been taken off of it. The second tRNA that came in, the one that was holding the second amino acid, whatever that was, 
is now in the P site. And the A site is empty. And the A site is sitting over this new codon that's being exposed. So this drawing is showing us what we just talked through, the very first part of elongation. We can see that the entire ribosome is in place. Remember that happened during initiation. The first tRNA is in the P site. That happened during initiation. And now we see an amino acid coming into the A site. We're going to match anticodon to codon. In this example, it happens to be carrying a glutamate amino acid, and it's coming into the A site. The large subunit is going to build a peptide bond between the carboxyl group sticking off of the methionine and the amino group sticking off of the glutamate. We're going to build a bond between those two amino acids. Translocation is going to occur. This diagram is showing us the two amino acids that now have a peptide bond between them. Remember, the whole point of translation is to build this chain, the chain of amino acids that is coded for by the chain of codons in the mRNA. On this slide, translocation has occurred. The tRNA that was in the P site is now in the E site. It no longer has its methionine. That's been taken off. It's ready to exit the ribosome and be activated, be charged up once again. The amino acid that was in the A site is now in the P site with its glutamate. And we have exposed a brand new codon. The A site is empty. We're ready for the next tRNA to come in.